we will make a start, everybody. We were just waiting for um some more registered participants to, to come online there. Um, so just before we do start, just to let everybody know that we, the, the session today is being recorded. So if there's anybody that has registered for today's session or today's webinar that hasn't been able to make it, a copy of the um, the session will still get out, sent out in the post session comms. So uh, so if there is anybody that you know has registered that hasn't made it, not to worry, they will still get a, a copy of the recording. So. Thank you um, for joining us today. Welcome to our webinar on preparing for and record. It's a big title, this one. Preparing for and recording a career's impact internal leadership review for FE using Compass. So today uh, we have myself, which is Peter. I'm a Compass Plus trainer and I lead on our virtual delivery programs. Joining me as well, uh, we have Philippa. So Philip, would you like to say hello and introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Philippa. I'm the Education Development Consultant with the Education Team for the CEC and also a Compass Plus trainer. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Philippa. Um, we've also got, and I don't know if Alison is on um, the, the call yet, we've got Alison Sadler. Alison, are you on the call at all? I don't know if she may be able to hear us or not. Um, I will try to, to rectify that. Uh, hopefully Alison can... Um, um, can join us to sort of speak as well. But Alison's on um, as obviously a, an EDT consultant there. So today's session, uh, we are looking to help you understand the value and the purpose of the internal leadership review. Um, we want to look at helping you prepare um, to carry out the, the internal leadership review as well. So the steps that you need to take in order to, to successfully achieve that. Looking at how to understand how to sorry record the responses to an internal leadership review within Compass and then sort of what you can do uh, moving from that. And then understanding how to action plan and maximize the value of the internal leadership re review. So really seeing the value in it and what it can provide you within your particular setting as well. So I'm just going to turn my camera off so that I can then see the, the full screen. So just to, to start off with, the way that we're going to run the session today is that I'm going to go through the, the slide deck, which provides you with um, uh, a plethora of, of information. So don't worry about the amount of information that we'll be sharing. You will obviously get a copy of this in the, the post session comms as well. So once I've done the uh, the slide deck, Philippa is then going to um, go into her demo and she's going to um, show you how you can find the the um the internal leadership review within Compass and then the, the steps and everything that you need to take in order to complete one of those. So that will be sort of the way that we run the, the session today. So starting on with our careers impact, uh, sorry, careers, yeah, careers impact internal leadership review. Again, it is quite a mouthful, that one. Um, but it's just to introduce you to the careers impact um, review, which is it's part of a new approach to driving impact across careers education. So this is uh, what we see as an overarching ambition for the system. And it allows us to, like you will see here on the slide, standardize continuous improvement and quality assurance of careers across the system. OK, so we've got the the, um, the the system overview here. So just to sort of assure everybody that it, it's firmly rooted in the, the Gatchby benchmarks and other evidence about sort of best practice within careers as well. So the careers impact system, like we can hopefully see here, um, aims to provide uh, assurance of quality of careers provision. It is looking to improve careers provision across the country, so not just in your own particular setting, but across the country as well, and to elevate the status of careers leadership. So such a, a vital role uh, within careers as well. So hopefully some of you may be familiar with the careers impact system already, um, and it does have different elements to it. But we're going to focus on the internal leadership review, which you can kind of see here in the, the blue circle in the center there. So an internal leadership review, it's based on the careers impact maturity models, which you can see um, from the diagram underpins and wraps around everything um, uh, careers. So the maturity model, it's, it's essentially uh, a series of statements which provides a shared language. And this is the important part or one of the many important parts, but that shared language of how careers can be positioned as a driver for college improvement. So undertaking the, the internal leadership review, it supports the quality assurance of your career's provision. 
and it, it encourages continuous improvement, which can then be aligned to your whole college, college's priorities, priorities and strategies. So um, it's intended to be done internally as a reflection piece by your college. So a very important word that the internal part. So it's done internally by uh, your college. And you'll notice there in the, the orange, the, the second part of the system, this is the peer-to-peer -peer reviews. Uh, so you might have heard about this in the, the, the hubs and the, the hubs have been talking about these. But um, from our point of view, that's, that's a bit further down the line. Um, and it, it's a, a possible avenue for those that have maybe already conducted one of the uh, internal leadership reviews. And it's that opportunity to collaborate with your colleagues and, and share sort of that best practice and support. However, uh, for today, for today only, um, we are sticking with the, the internal leadership review. OK, so the, the kind of the why of it all. So what are the benefits? Why should we be doing the internal uh, leadership review? So these are some of the, the key benefits of, of the internal leadership review. So it's around it's it, it's, it's all about embedding uh, careers impact uh, internal leadership review within your institution. And by doing that, by embedding that within to your um, institution, it allows you to then sort of really um, uh, access these five things here. Um, so we've got engaged leaders at the start there. So by doing the, the the review, it will hopefully unlock leaders' engagement. It will support the wider understanding of careers through the process of reflection and discussion around strategic careers leadership. So it very much is that sort of reflection part. The second step there, the celebrate success. So it's an opportunity to reflect on the strength of your careers provision. Um, I think quite a lot of time uh, institutions look at the areas of development and kind of where are our areas of um, weakness almost. But they sometimes to forget to celebrate the successes. And it is really vitally important that um, when you are making leverage and you are uh, making progress, that that's celebrated. So by doing the uh, the review, that helps and supports this process as well. We've got the middle section there, which is the sustained quality and impact. So by embedding the, the impact evaluation of careers into your whole institution, hopefully the quality assurance mechanisms um, will be there and they're both there are there and not just as a bolt on um, to the careers lead. So you can develop the whole institution um, approach to careers as well. So it's about that wider distributed leadership approach. So it's not just that one person job, but it should be that wider leadership approach. The, the fourth one there, which is our embed and best practice. So again, understanding what best practice looks like. It's sometimes hard to achieve best practice if you don't actually know what it is. So um, it allows us to understand what that actually looks like and how it can be elevated to ensure a meaningful and sustained achievement. So um, that achievement of the benchmarks for each and every learner within your institution, which is hopefully our ultimate goal. And then the last one there is aligning our priorities. So Careers uh, can be really seen as part of the solution to drive uh, whole institution improvement um, through priorities as well. OK, so we've got obviously um, a, a slide here of the, the maturity model. So you can see from the layout, the maturity model, that the, the practical things I suppose to note about this is that it's it's going to be split into 16. So you can't see that from here, but there is a slide uh, either next or in, in a couple of slides time that shows you these six themes. Each theme broken down into multiple components that combine to uh, encapsulate careers leadership in its entirety, um, leaving nothing to chance. So everything is really covered within each of the components. Um, we can see, again, you, obviously you'll, you'll do this when you get the slide back because there's quite a lot of information on there, how the language of the, um, the benchmarks is embedded in a way that is future proofed in preparation for um, the, the, uh, the Gatsby Next 10, so the review. Um, we've got the quality uh, of within each component improves from the left to the right. So if you um, are looking at where you are improving, you will be from the, the left moving all the way to the right. Um, and it's on a, a continuum basis of increasing maturity. And then finally, we've got um, where you do have existing systems and structures and processes, et cetera, um, which the um, things like learner voice, parental engagement, it looks at those as well. OK, so everything within the careers impact system starts with the maturity model. So the model literally um, unpacks and uh, underpins what careers leadership is in its en uh, entirety. And it also gives us a, a shared language and a, uh, and a definition, not only of what careers leadership is, 
but also what high quality practice looks like, which is what we should be ultimately striving towards and the journey to maturity of careers and leadership um, within colleges as well. So if you, uh, something to note really is that this is a journey um, and that you, uh, that, that you're on and you are likely to have reached maturity, at the, you're not likely to have reached maturity at this stage, um, but you can move in both directions on on the the, the model. So when you um, do look at the, the model, it, as much as you can move sort of left to right, it's, it is um, possible that you go right to left, unfortunately. Um, it's important also to note that the model doesn't define the actual role of a careers leader. OK, so that's vitally important. It, it's a lot bigger than that. Um, and it, it, it articulates um, what careers leadership uh, is and, and the role um, that, that it has within the, the whole college improvement. And then so finally, just on, on this slide here, it's looking at the, the internal leadership review tool. Um, it allows you as a college um, to reflect on the maturity of careers leadership throughout the, the, the college. So it's not about reflecting on your performance of any one individual, um, because again, this is about that whole shared approach and the wider leadership approach, but it's about looking at things as a whole from your whole setting. Okay, so, here we have the, the six themes. So I just mentioned earlier that it, it's underpinned by the, the six themes. So um, these are at the heart of, of all this work, really. So they allow you or us to uh, standardize uh, interpretation of the Gatsby benchmarks. And it allows colleagues in colleges um, to understand the value of the benchmarks in, rela in relation to college achievement. So from your perspective, it allows you to really link up the theme to some of the, the benchmarks. So for example there, and again, I'll not read them all verbatim, but you can see theme one that that heavily links towards the careers leadership vision and intent and planning. So it's very much that benchmark one approach about having all of those um, priorities in place. Um, if we then jump to, for example, just benchmark, uh, sorry, theme three, understanding of labour market information. So that link spent to our benchmarks two and seven. So you can see there um, very much from those uh, six different themes, how they then all map and align to the, the benchmark achievement, which again is what we're, we're looking to, to achieve. Okay, so like I just, uh, well, I didn't actually say, but um, we are looking today at themes one and two. Okay, so these are the key elements. If you look at them there, so we've got the um, careers leadership, strategic uh, planning, and then addressing the, the needs of all students um, and impact of their evaluation. So um, these two themes are where we feel that you get the highest leverage. So these are going to be the areas that we're looking at today, or Philip is certainly going to be looking at today with you in the demo. Um, what we do, we feel as though theme one and theme two are the areas where um, you get the, the highest leverage. And uh, the argument to, to, could be that they are the, the keystones right, we've got there um, within, uh, within this review as well. Lovely analogy there in the bottom right corner of if you take away that keystone, things start to collapse and don't work as well as they should. So um, really, we're going to show how important these two themes are today. So language within the, the columns, uh, sort of what do we know? So if we consider how the maturity model continuum works, um, the descriptors, again, like we've seen on some of those previous slides, as they progress from left to right, we can see um, increasing indicators of maturity. So where we are progressing and where we are developing. So you may experience some movement along the, the continuum in both directions, like I mentioned earlier, um, which would be expected. But the key here is to sort of ask yourselves the question of how do we then um, navigate and mitigate against uh, against that happening? Or what can we do or what can we put in place to respond when sort of the inevitable happens? So in a less mature college, the provision could be great, but it's likely um, to start to have standalone activities, elements of, of happenstance. Um, but as you move towards the right hand side, um, you can see where the provision begins to be more embedded as a whole college approach um, and it's responsive to the individual needs. And in the most mature careers um, areas, it becomes part of the solution to tackling strategic priority. So as you start to work your way through um, th those columns that you will see the, the increase in maturity um, and that will then also be reflected within um, your school as well. 
So looking at the, the internal leadership reviews and sort of how do we go about approaching these. So a, a quick summary here, um, you can now download the full version of um, the maturity model from Compass um, or from the, the resource directory. So um, there's, there's that available for you. But if we just kind of move from left to right here, we've got the first stage, which is convene. So again, you would convene all those that's going to be involved in the distributed leadership of careers in your college to reflect on the model. So it's really that coming together part. The second stage is then the agree. So the uh, the um, achieving the agreement of best fit um, the, 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 for the statements of your college, um, which really is um, in each of the rows of the maturity model be the, that best describes the practice within your college as well. So how do we all agree um, on, on what that sort of best practice looks like within our college? Everybody may have sort of different interpretations on that, but that's the, the sort of real discussion point. Then the, the third stage there, uh, which is the, the record section, um, you'll be able to then record. So once you've done the agree, you'll then be able to record your responses and gain data visualizations, which we will show you in the, the demo today. So very important that in the convene, we're getting together the second stage, you are then agreeing on, on what best practice looks like within your within your college. You're then going to move into Compass and then start to record that data and that information for it to then be able to sort of provide you with some visualizations and kind of next steps. And then that fourth stage there, we've got ACT. So this is using the recommendations to drive forward action plans. So from the record, it will then um, provide, Compass will then provide you with uh, recommendations of how to sort of progress in, in terms of maturity. And that is what this stage is all about. It's about seeing through on those plans and putting them into to action. So you can work with your, <coughs> excuse me, your ECs um, to look to get extra support and resources. Um, for, for those aspects of the maturity model that you want to improve on. So again, it, it's not that you uh, stand alone and you're on your own. Please feel free um, to, to reach out to get that help and support if you uh, need it. So looking, just we're going to drill a little bit further into each one of those stages there. So this part here, so who should take part in the internal leadership review? Um, so this is really, really uh, an important slide. It, it's really critical. Uh, and there's, re I suppose, really the answer is there's not the expectation that hubs or colleagues um, from the hub leads um, um, to take any internal reviews. It's about the college yourselves kickstarting a, a deep reflection of the maturity of your career's leadership. Um, so it could be lots of different people that should be involved within this sort of um, leadership review from a, a list of, let's say, link governors, um, enterprise advisors, CENCOs, um, teachers, your principals, um, yourselves. There could be a, a whole host of um, people involved in carrying out the internal leadership review and having an input into um, what careers looks like within your particular college. So um, it's really important to get all of those views and the way that you do that could be um, in, in a, um, a variety of different ways. You do it collectively, individually, um, but it's really um, taking into account that it shouldn't be just one person doing this review. Um, it should be um, a collective approach. So on the, the agree slide here, again, I'm not going to read this verbatim. It's quite wordy, but you will also get the, the slides, remember. So the whole process here is underpinned by the maturity model, and it includes um, colleagues reflecting on how, how each row um, is, is sort of a, a best fit for, for your college. So it's to certainly something for you to, to consider um, and how you then move that forward as well. So um, I suppose approaches really um, that you could have to, to completing um, the things are here as well. OK, so we could have it could be the um, uh, a careers lead uh, and a principal. It could be a collaboration where more than one person comes together. You could have those um, governors collaboration. So almost being that critical friend and looking very strategically um, at how careers is embedded within your college. Um, and then it could be a mix of, of everybody coming together as well. So you've got that step four there, the collaboration uh, of um, numerous different roles within your, your college and how you then complete and move forward within the, the review. So the record section here. So this one, um, this makes the, the digital feature quite unique amongst the, the suite of tools. Um, 
as the main action is conducted offline. So it's that kind of discussion, the the agreeing of what it looks like. So it's not necessarily um, something that you have to be logged into Compass for. Um, so colleagues could then go online though. Once once you've agreed those um, um, solutions or, or those um, outcomes, the, then the, the information is input into Compass. But again, it doesn't have to be done by Crisley because this is quite a, an admin function. If you do have that support to, to do it, then it's just uploading those results into to Compass, which then obviously provides you with the, the information afterwards. So the act part. So we've now, you've uploaded the information into to Compass. Um, it's about then... Um, reviewing this annually. So as part of your sort of normal self-evaluation process, you would review um, your your careers and do uh, another internal leadership review. You um, would recommend sort of um, two to three areas to prioritise based on your whole school or your whole college, sorry, priorities. Uh, and bearing in mind certainly those themes one and two, which you just mentioned, which are likely to high, have the highest leverage um, and also that biggest impact on your learners, certainly, certainly in the, the first instance as well. So dependent on um, which area you choose to focus on, you could then sort of break it down into a small series of actions, which you certainly should record in your strategic development plan. So taking that information from Compass, having a look at what is sort of um, aligned to your sort of priorities and your strategic plan and getting all that down um, um, so that you can then sort of record that information. You would then, from that, you would then need to work through with senior leadership to ensure that the priorities are aligned with your college improvement plan so that everything is sort of pushing um, in the, the same direction. And then to start working through these actions to make sure that you agree regular meeting points, certainly with those that are involved in the careers provision, to track updates um, on the progress that you're making towards the actions um, that, the, that you've agreed as a result of the, the information that Compass has given you. Okay, at this point, I need to stop sharing to allow Philippa to share, hopefully. Is that all right, Philip? Are you there still? It is. I'm just trying to, <laughs> Sorry, trying to find the right Apologies. screen. I hope that it's all working. Would you just confirm when you can see my screen? I can, yeah, I can see your screen Fantastic. there. Absolutely. So um, thank you, everybody, for, for, for sticking with us on this. So this is, the, this is your compass. So when you log into compass, you'll notice immediately that um, all your various um, tools are down here, but you'll see that because this is a new feature, it's highlighted at the top. So all you do is click to get started. And that will take you to a page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how to navigate your way around the various aspects of the tool. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like when you actually complete one, but we'll just start. So when you when you go on here, the first thing it suggests you do is it tells you a little bit about why you would um, go on Compass to record your results. And obviously the opportunity to have the longevity and have it actually recorded within your tool is, is, is really, really important. On the longer term basis as well, it will enable hubs to see who's actually taken part in an internal leadership review. You might then be given that opportunity that Peter mentioned earlier to do the next part of, of the whole system, which is to be involved in a peer-to-peer -peer where you can find out from other um, colleges um, or possibly even combine with schools to, to review your um, steps and get some really good collaborative work going on. You'll notice here that you've got three sections across the top. So the first one I'm going to go into is Access Essential Guidance. And, and what's in here is really quite useful. So you've got some of the information that Pete has just talked through, and why you would undertake your um, internal leadership review. A little bit more about the different themes, the six themes. Um, you'll notice down here as well that you can download the maturity model and that's not the only place that you can download the maturity model but i'll show you that in a moment as well it reminds you as well that when you're preparing for um the careers impact internal leadership review that it's not just the job of the careers leader to do this it should be done in collaboration with other key um stakeholders within your teams you know your line manager perhaps the principal of the college perhaps senior um faculty directors and, and so on and so forth. Um, 
Again, the examples of the case studies of how you might do that, whether you all sit down independently and um, decide your, your best fit and then meet together as a group, um, or whether you do that in teams or whether you do it um, in, in smaller groups and then come together and, and agree those best fit um, descriptors across the statements. Um, and then obviously being able to go on and um, log it on here. And you'll notice as well that if you get stuck on anything, there is some really helpful information and guidance. So that's what this section here gives you. If you go in here, this is where you can access a full scale model of the maturity model. So you can have a look through. And I'm going to talk about themes one and two being the 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 cornerstones, the keystones, if you like. And if you have a look at some of the headings, we're talking here about careers leadership and distributed leadership, vision and intent for career strategic planning, um, leadership, again, strategic leadership of career support and challenge from governance. So when you read those meaty statements, um, you'll see why we think themes one and two, if, if you focus first and if you on themes one and two, you will get those highest leverage access for your, for your learners. Um, and actually, if you get it right in terms of vision, intent, strategic planning, and you put the right resource and support in place, then it's most likely that those other themes, themes three, four, five, and six, will probably slot nicely into place for you. So I'm just going to go back here. And then let's imagine that we have, we've conducted our review, we've got our model in front of us, we've shaded it in, we've agreed, um, We've had that meeting and we've agreed the best fit um, and we're ready to record. So when you go on to start the, the recording of it, it will take you immediately to a page that gives you, again, a little bit of information saying, have you actually read the guidance? Have you considered and have you discussed it? And are you ready to record it? So if you're ready to record, it takes you in and the first thing it asks you to do is identify who have you, who have you done this with? Well, I'm the careers leader. And I involved my principal. I also involved the link governor. I actually, my SLT line manager is actually curriculum and teaching and learning. And I've got careers coordinators within my team and also heads of department. So you just click all the ones that apply. It will take you to this sort of page. And you'll notice that this is very similar to when you complete your compass evaluation, that you can see the themes as you progress through them. And you've got a little checkered flag to show that you get to the end of it. So it's asking you to reflect on each statement um, and then fill in the box. Now, it's a slight variation. You'll notice that obviously on the maturity model, it goes from left to right. But because of the way that it has to be designed on IT, we have to go top to bottom. So this is the first column, first response, second, third and fourth. And you'll notice as well, there's also a fifth one available. So it might be, for example, that um, you have not yet got somebody in place so imagine that you're actually not the careers leader and you've just popped on um, and it might be that there isn't one yet so you are able to put a response in not yet achieving and so you click the box and you, you look at the statement so I had filled in my second one and I move on and you just literally fill in the box as you go through and you'll notice at the top that it starts to toggle across to show you just how far you've got so I'm just going to um, come out of this. So the beauty of this is imagine fire alarm goes off or you get halfway through it and you just need to leave the building. Then the good news is that we'll store this for you and enable you to resume your one at any time. So that's great. So you can pick it up and resume where you left off and carry on filling it in as you go along. And so don't worry if you lose sight of your review. You can come back to it. But I've got a couple here that have been prepared just to show you what it looks like when you've completed it. So when you've gone through and answered all the questions and you filled in all the boxes, you can then click view responses and it will take you to this summary page. And I'm just going to reduce my screen slightly so that you can see the whole thing in one go. And so what you've got here 
is you have got um, the little arrow, and again, not so dissimilar to the compass evaluation, um, and that's quite deliberate so that it seems quite familiar to us. And if you hover on any of them, it will tell you exactly what you filled in for your answer. And we can see here that we've got some green ones in response three, and we've got some orange ones. And you can see that, as we said, we were going to focus initially, we're going to look at themes one and two to get our highest leverage actions. And so those are the only ones that are on this current visualization. So what I can do here is I can highlight and I can have a look at my strengths. And I think it's really important, as Peter mentioned, to be really important, go on and have a look at your strengths and think, about what can we do to celebrate those? Are we going to tell the learners about it? Are we going to do social media posts on this? Are we going to make sure that we've um, let parents know? Um, you know, are we going to send messaging out to celebrate what we've done well? Um, and you can also, if you want to, just focus on the indicated areas of um, improvement. So those priority action areas. And I'm going to have a look at those for just now because I want to decide um, which ones I'm going to focus on for my actions. So obviously for me, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, which ones are key priorities for us as, as, as a college? And um, so this one here is quite low and there's an issue there with my governance. So there's ad hoc opportunities to consider careers provision at governing body meetings and report to governor. So maybe I've not got a system of meeting with my link governor at this moment in time, and maybe that's something that I need to strengthen because if I want to continue to raise the profile and make sure that it's strategically, it's a whole solid um, approach to careers and not just the careers leader, then that's something that I might consider. I also have put here that I haven't yet got um, an enterprise advisor. So I might decide to pick that one and have a conversation with my careers hub and see whether or not um, you can help me find an enterprise advisor or, or, or talk to my heads of faculties and see whether anybody's got some really good business connections where we could potentially look to have an enterprise advisor. And then here I've got not yet achieving for learner perception. So what am I doing to gather learner voice around my careers provision? Um, how do I know how effective my program is if I'm not gathering learner perception? So again, something that I really think I need to focus on. So decide which ones I want to look at. If you want to view all your responses in one go, um, and this comes with a health check because the development team have been doing some work on this and they've, they've toggled it slightly differently um, in the live product, but it's going to go back to its correct view on Thursday. So bear with us. But when you click on here, you can see for each of them um, which question and which response you put for each of yours. Um, so if you want to see the whole thing in one go, you can actually see the maturity model here. It will be in a better layout come next week. Um, so watch out for that going live. Um, and I know that at this moment in time, you haven't done two um, reviews, but just to show you that you can do this, I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to go on my second one. So I have the second one and you can see straight away that I've got four areas for improvement. If I want to have a look back and see how much I've progressed, you can actually show the progress that you've made. So you can see that I've, I've made progress in distributed careers leadership in governance. I've now got an enterprise advisor, but I've not moved forward yet for learner perception. So you can, over time, as you do more of these, so next year, when you do your second one, you'll be able to go back and review your responses. And what's really quite nice here as well is your ability to share these documents with people. So you can click on the share link. And it will allow you to copy a link. As you can see, the links copying here onto my clipboard. It just takes a few seconds. It takes longer in the demo account than it does in a, in a live account. And then what I can do is I can email to my senior leaders and the people who were involved in the review and let them see this. Um, and when they open it up, they will see exactly this. They'll be able to toggle to priority action areas or not, as the case may be. Um, and they'll also be able to go on and view the responses. 
And um, but what I didn't do was show you the recommendations. So this is the app bit. So once I've decided on the two or three priorities that I'm going to action, and I want to just make sure that um, I know what my next steps are. Um, so I'm starting to think about step-by-step -step actions for this. So I, I throw some support and challenge from governance. So if you go on there, it shows you your response. You can read where you would need to move to next. So I can see that I've got regular planned opportunities now for governors because this is my this is my second review. But the next one is that consistent approach to reporting within governing body meetings and relevant sub committees. Um, and, and, and so we're really stepping it up. If I want to know how to support, then I can see that I've got support down here for um, links to documents that might help me. So the support for engaging governors, or and there's also an online training for governors that will take me directly to links. If I just click on this, this will take me to a slide deck on how to get support from governors. I'm just going to come back into the system for, for just now. And so I can... I can go and get myself some help, support and advice. Stakeholder voice, another one that I want to look at. It talks about how can you collect stakeholder insight. Um, and there's more information, of course, on the careers leader training about things like the future skills questionnaire. Now, I know that at college level, you haven't got the future skills questionnaire on your compass. And, and so you can't send it out easily, but we do have, and Alison, who's on the call, does have a, a micro, Microsoft Forms version of the post-16 skills questionnaire. So it is possible to put it on a Microsoft Form or on a Google Form and send it out to some of your stakeholders um, if you want to. And of course, that will then give you some of the intelligence that you might want to help evaluate the impact of your program by using learner um, perceptions as, as well. So I'm hoping that Alison might be able to pop that into the chat for you. And then if as a college, you have decided that um, it's all very well having your priority actions in themes one and two, and that's good and proper, but actually as a priority, we've set ourselves um, a, a whole college or a whole institution priority within our development plan or improvement plan around theme three, which is understanding the labour market or theme four, linking curriculum learning to careers, or of course, encounters with employees and experiences of the workplace. So it might be that we've, we're, we're going to have, um, we're going to set our, a priority action in one of these ones because it links our whole development plan. And again, just case studies. So it shows you the result you put in and you can link yourself to some case study work if, if you want to. Um, and so all, all of these actions are here and all of them send you to some additional resources that might help you if you're looking for what to do with one of your priority actions. So I think I've demonstrated most of it here. Um, so again, Hopefully, you can see how easy it is to have it on Compass um, and, and the value of being able then to gain those insights. Plus, of course, thinking ahead, should, um, should admin member staff pop this on here for you or should you as a careers leader potentially pop it on here? And then if you decide that you're moving away from the college, then obviously this is now a historical record that can be pulled up so that you can refer back to it. Um, any time you like, rather than having something that's potentially stuffed in a drawer um, that um, gets lost in 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 the back of a uh, back of a drawer or cupboard somewhere. So I'm just going to stop sharing um, and just make sure that there aren't any questions or anything in the chat where you want any help. No, we're all right at the minute there, Philippa. Um... I've just uh, enabled Alison. You you have the um, function of the um, access to be able to to speak now. I know you're on mute at the moment, but you can if you wanted to at any point. Um, sort of interject as well. So, uh, are you happy with the the demo there, Philippe? To to sort of move on now. 
I am. I know. Hand back to you, Peter. Okay. Thanks very much. So I will just share my screen again. So moving back just into to the slide deck now, um, and kind of then picking up from where where Philip has just left off. Some of the the remaining slides here you, you will notice are more just a um, a reiteration of what Philippa has just gone through. So I'll not spend too much time going over these, um, but just to kind of point out again that from your Compass dashboard, uh, this is where you would get access to the um, Careers Leader Impact uh, Review. So we've got the the Get Started there. Then, like Philippa pointed out, you've got those sort of three stages. Um, the first one giving that guidance. Um, the the second one letting you look at that maturity model, and then the third is where you then go in and start to record all of that data and information that you've agreed. Um, once you've convened and sort of discussed what that looks like, we would then um, we work with three themes. So these are uh, all of the the different stages, and you'll notice it looks very much like a, a compass evaluation. I think Philippa um, alluded to that as well, and you work your way through it um, uh, as as you see fit based on the the answer and the the data that you have got in front of you. Um, once that is then sort of completed, this is your dashboard. So as you complete these annually. These will then um, appear here sort of in, in date order, always the most recent two to the top. Again, very similar to your compass evaluations. And uh, like Philip has just demonstrated there, you can um, save them and then come back to them later. So if, the, you know, if there is an emergency in school, a fire alarm, et cetera, whatever, that you can then save your progress and come back to, to then complete it when, when time allows. And you can also then certainly as you move through um, having completed some of the, the reviews that you can then compare to your previous ones as well. So then we're looking at sort of your, your insight summary side of things. So this is where you've scored yourself and what that looks like, what it looks like as a visualization. And again, this is part uh, where Philippa um, explained that we can either download this as a, a PDF so we can have a look at it. We can also then share it with um, those people that um, need to be involved or have been involved in that discussion um, around the, the review. So this is, so when Philip was just mentioning there, um, the current view at looking at all of your responses, which this then falls just sort of underneath your uh, data visualization. This is what it would look like for, for you to be able to see where your responses are. So where Philip had sort of um, toggle along with the, the scroll bar, this is what it will refer back to. So you've got all of your um, the different options for your uh, responses in terms of that maturity and how you have then answered each of your particular questions um, within the within the review. So this is how they will all then look. So you can see it all on on one page. Um, but, and I suppose really one of the really important parts of this is looking at those recommendations um, as to looking at how you can then move from sort of response one to two and, and how you can progress with sort of your maturity with their, with careers within your college. Um, but also those which I think is often very helpful. It's great to say, right, well, you need to get from this to this without offering any sort of um, solutions or, or pathways to help you get there. So the, this section on the, the recommendations, I feel is really, really important because it now allows you to access support and guidance and advice um, to help you move through from, let's say, response one to response two or two to three, et cetera. And it really provides you that um, tailored support. So really great section um, within the, the review. Uh, like Philip had just showed as well, and and again, this is um, a lot around sort of shouting from the, the rooftops about the progress that you're making and celebrating those successes in whichever way you choose. But being able to then share this information um, with those people involved with the review to kind of say, look, you know, this is where we were. This is where we are now. We're making great progress. But look, this is where we need to get to. And really using it as a positive conversation to sort of drive that um whole school sort of leadership approach to careers to really really push that forward and i think it's always great to be able to um show where progress has been made um because that also then drives that positivity as well so the the comparing against your previous review is just obviously in this section here again i know philip assured you it so as you start to complete um more reviews annually you will get the option um to be able to do this so we've got uh, again. This is just to sort of reiterate the um, the the stages that you need to do uh, or to take place. So we need to you need to meet 
Um, so we've got that convene section there. So all of the, the relevant people who um, you want to, to take part in the review, um, uh, getting those people together. And again, I think Philippa mentioned there as well, you know, it can be done um, individually, it can be done in teams, but certainly that sort of coming together in the agree section to um, look over answers and really analyse the the way that um, careers and, and leadership is uh, perceived within your particular college. We've then got the record section where, and again, Philippa mentioned that it doesn't have to be a careers lead input in this information. If you do have um, the luxury of some support, admin, um, whatever it may be, to get that information in there, it's very much just a, a, an admin job. And then the act part, which is that looking at the, the recommendations um, and then really planning ahead or sort of taking away some actions and planning ahead as to how you're going to implement those into your into your careers program into your college as well so we're just gonna um sort of start to wrap things up now um we've got a couple of quotes here from um previous uh colleges that have um used compass and, and sort of carried out the um the, the review and just a, um, a couple of little quotes from them. So we can see here on the right, it says it was a great reflective exercise that really helped us to have a look at where we are on our journey. And a really important part there is that it is a journey. Um, so things aren't going to be fixed overnight and it's a um, it's a process you need to um, really get on board with. And, and the more people that are doing that, then hopefully the easier it will be to, to drive that forward. But just a couple of quotes there from, um, from colleges that have already carried out the, the review. So um, within your Compass uh, site, on your, with your Compass um, product, sorry, you, you will have access to resources and support. So if we um, just go through these sort of one by one, we've got the, the Compass uh, Help Center. So um, Philippa mentioned there, and she certainly showed you uh, a few of the different articles that you can access uh, from, from your Compass uh, account uh, and really doing that. So when Philippa had gone into one of the sections, there was lots of um, support there. In, in the health center. So it, it can talk you through step-by-step step as to how to um, move the, the review forward. That can also be found in the, the CEC website. We've got the, the EC um, support there and the hub support. So really, really utilize that. Again, that can be very helpful when you are looking to embed recommendations. Um, it could even be part of something that we mentioned very early on in the slides of that sort of peer-to-peer -peer support. The, your ECs can help and get involved with that as well. Um, and they can then sort of put you in touch with, with others so that you can um, share best practice uh, with, with other colleges as well. And then on the right hand side there, and again, I know Philippa sort of clicked into, I think it was the governance one um, where you can use the resource directory. Um, it's there for you to, to really um, use as much as possible. So if you are having any problems or if you need any help or there are any um, training opportunities that you may want to um, take advantage of, they're using the, the resource directory within your Compass account as well. That is so vitally important. So just starting to sort of bring things to a, a close. So we've got the, um, the, the careers leader training here. So to access this, you would just um, use the QR code there. And this is a funded training program. So the, uh, the, the, the landscape of careers and careers leader changes all the time. It, it's, um, it never sits still. And this training is um, uh, there to, to help you be the, the best that you can possibly be within your job role. Um, so it's there to support you, guide you and develop you. And, and it's again, it's, it's um, put together with, with different training providers, you would just log on to the QR code and then you would enroll onto um, particular courses that um, will be relevant to yourselves. The, the second section of the, the, the training is the, the sort of the wider approach. Again, another QR code there to access. And this is on our portal, um, which then takes you to um, different training modules that you can access, certainly to um, to help drive your proficiency um, in certain areas and competency. And you can see here, we've got this one highlighted, which is the careers impact system. And just for example, peer-to-peer -peer participant learning. So you could log on, register, and then go on to that online training there to, again, just to, to uh, help develop you um, and to keep your knowledge and expertise up to, to date. We've got this particular slide here. I don't know, Alison, if you want to, would you like I to? Am. Oh, I'm going like to I'm gonna jump in if that's okay. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. 
Um, so hi everybody, some of you may know me from um, my FE community of improvement that I do nationally, but uh, just while we've got colleges on the call, I just wanted to take the opportunity to highlight if you're not already joined up to our um, FE and ITP Connect newsletter, there is a link there in the slide um, when you get them to do so. Um, just um, rather excitingly, you've you probably, even if you signed up to the newsletter, we've been a bit quiet recently, and that's because we've got some exciting developments coming around our partnerships with AOC and AELP in terms of relaunching our new communities of um, improvement. Um, Heather, I'm particularly interested in contacting you because just seeing that you've got four campuses, one of the things that we're looking and developing at the moment is um, a dashboard which would allow you to collate all that information and oversee it in one place. Um, so if if you're interested in that, please get in contact with me and um, we can uh, we can look to work with you on that one um, moving forward. So yeah, if, if you're interested in either of the new communities, whether you're a training provider or um, an FE college, sign up to the newsletter, which is coming out beginning of next week, and there will be lots of new updates about um, exciting new activity for this academic year. Wow. That, that everything, Alison? Yes, thank you. No problem, no problem at all. Um, okay, so that brings us to um, a, a close. I think, Philip, if I'll just check in with you before I go through the, the webinar, is there anything outstanding questions-wise that we need to cover at all or has kind of everything been addressed? I've been able to answer everybody's questions in the chat, but if there is anybody who's got any further questions, we're happy to hang around for a few minutes and, and, and answer any of those for you if we haven't already done so. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much, Philippa. Um, so the last slide here then really is our feedback slide. So when we put these sessions um, together for, for yourselves, we appreciate that um, time is not a commodity that everybody has lots of, certainly in the world of careers. So we want to make sure that these sessions are as, as meaningful, as impactful as possible for you. So through if you could access the qr code that's on the, the screen there and then there will be two sessions in on the 24th so obviously we want the second one and um, the first one will be a, a different webinar if you could access the qr code and leave us um any any feedback whether it's constructive and developmental or positive and reassuring it's all taken on board um in the same way so we really look to um take on board anything that you do suggest so if things could be changed or you would like things to be changed and different things to be included, then please feel free to, to put that in there and we will definitely action that moving forwards. However, uh, similarly, if, if things have sort of ticked the box and, and achieve what you were hoping to from the session, then please, you know, again, leave the, the feedback that you feel is relevant for that as well. But we're always looking to um, make sure that these sessions and webinars are as purposeful as possible so that you get the most out of it when you, when you join um, with us. So that pretty much brings us to um, the close for, for the session. Really, really hope that you found it useful and beneficial. Um, certainly, hopefully through Philippa's demo, you kind of understood and got the, the idea of how simple and easy it is to, to um, complete these reviews um, in Compass and then get that data and information as a result of that, what you put in. So um, then moving forward, putting those actions in place and, and really looking to drive careers forward. So. I do hope it's been useful. Um, the copy of this will be sent out in the post session comms as well for anybody that registered but couldn't attend. Um, and yeah, thank you, Philippa. Thank you, Alison, for 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 helping out as well. And um, hope to see you all again soon. Thank you.